I am so happy that you're able to join us for this extended interview. Make sure to visit theoffbeatlife.com. Again, that's theoffbeatlife.com to get more killer resources. All right, so we've been talking about landing a remote job for a while now, but the one thing you're probably most curious about is how to learn the online skills you need to land these jobs. I'm not just talking about getting a brief introduction, but learning from actual accredited schools so you can be taken seriously when you apply for these jobs. You've been waiting for a while, and I'm really sorry about that, but I have finally created a whole page listing the best courses to take from teaching English online to becoming a freelance writer and so much more, all from trusted sources that will get you that remote job. So if you're ready and serious to take the next step, then visit theoffbeatlife.com slash learn online skills to get started. Again, you can visit theoffbeatlife.com slash learn online skills to get started. Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here for this extended interview with Jim and Mai where we're going to talk about how to connect with local culture by learning the language. Hey you both, thank you again for being here. Thanks for having us. Yes, hi. (laughs) <laughs> and um, if you haven't heard the initial interview yet, I botched Mai's name. I called her May, so it's it's Mai. It's mine. <laughs> Happens all the time. All the time. <laughs> She's like, I'm used to this. But yes. yeah, thank you both for doing this. And I really love that your business is all about teaching people, not just the language, but how you can really assimilate to the different cultures in the Spanish-speaking country, specifically in Mexico, because Mai is from Mexico. So can you tell us, before you tell us all of your tips and tricks, can you tell us about you and why you live an offbeat life? So I'm Jim. I'm from Rochester, Minnesota, home of the Mayo Clinic. That seems to be our claim to fame. And uh, in 2010, I decided to stop being a recording studio engineer and owner in search of a more exciting life where I could go and travel and explore more of the world because that has always been a passion of mine. And I decided to learn Spanish and that's how I met Mai. Uh, Long story short, together we um, made Spanish and Go, which is a podcast, a YouTube channel, and a website. We also host Spanish immersion retreats in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And I am Mai. Mayra, actually, and I am from Colima, Mexico, a small state in the Pacific side of the country. I am a language teacher, and after I graduated from college, I decided that I wanted to keep learning English, keep practicing my English, and that's how I went on a website where I met Jim, and yeah, that's how we got to start a romantic relationship and then a business together and everything Jim mentioned before. (laughs) And the rest, as they say, is history. You know, it all started with wanting to learn the language, which turned into romance. And now (laughs) it's a whole business. I love it. You you know, um, your story is so fascinating and it's really inspirational. And of course, make sure you guys listen to their initial interview because it's it's pretty, pretty awesome. They're both really great. So today, though, we're going to talk about how you can actually use your language to connect with local culture, right? And Jim, you did that because you connected with Mai when you visited uh, Mexico because you guys were first, um, I guess, language learning buddies. And then you ended up visiting each other and you were able to connect by, you know, Jim learning the language. And then now you are both living in Mexico. And this is kind of your dream come true of doing that. So for somebody who's wanting to do this, who wants to move maybe to a different country, or maybe just wants to travel and really connect more, not just become like an ordinary basic tourist, how can they do this? How can they actually connect with people in in different countries? Yeah, well, I think a lot of people just look at speaking another language as just an ability that you learn. And it is, And that's what I thought when I was starting to learn it. But there's so much more to it than that. 
sure, if you speak the language, you're going to have an easier time navigating through Spanish-speaking countries, in, in our case, since we focus on that. But there are a number of other things that happen when you learn the local language. And you can just see the smile on people's faces when you're speaking their language, and they are not expecting you to, right? Most of the time in Mexico, if you look like you're from the United States, people will assume that you don't speak Spanish. And when you do start using just a little bit, it's amazing to see how excited people get and how much more welcoming and how much more curious they are about you to know, wow, there's this gringo who is here speaking Spanish with me. Like that's, that's strange to so many people because so many people here are looking at how they can learn English to get ahead in life. And it's, it's a strange idea for a lot of locals to think, oh, somebody wants to learn my language. Why? Right. When uh, so many people in the world and not just Spanish speaking countries, but all over think, oh, I need to learn English to get ahead. Why would somebody want to learn my language? So learning a language is an ability, but it allows you to do so much more. It allows you to live abroad. It allows you to have deeper relationships with people and the places that you're visiting. And it allows you the ability to connect it to the culture in a way that you just simply could not otherwise. Yeah. I feel like it's also a superpower. I've met people who know like five, six languages fluently and they could just travel pretty much anywhere and then just be able to communicate. And because, you know, when you don't know the language, you always feel like the odd one out, like you're not a part of something. There's always that barrier that's stopping you from really connecting with someone. But once you get out of that, once you actually start learning and just start putting yourself out there, it really becomes a superpower. It allows you to connect so much more on a deeper level with with different people in, in that way, which is so beautiful. And like you said, Jim, it's, it's amazing to see somebody from a different culture, someone unexpected, learn your language, and you're kind of pleasantly surprised and you're like in awe that they, they actually did that. So... <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Because it's a lot of work. And uh, I think it immediately shows locals, wow, this person has taken a significant amount of time out of their lives to learn a little bit more about me. And so it's, it's such a great way to start a relationship with someone abroad, because you have that, that initial reaction by the locals of okay, this person actually wants to know something about me and my culture. Mm -hmm. And it also makes your life as a traveler easier. We have to talk about this um, thing that happens in like anywhere in the world where you are, when you are a tourist, there are people who try to take advantage of the, fa of the fact that you probably don't know the place, you probably don't have like a support network, like network there, you probably don't understand the money in, in this place. And on top of that, if you don't speak the language, then you are, you become an easy target to someone who's probably just trying to scam travelers, you know, and we've been in situations, um, unfortunately, here in Mexico, it happens all the time in this part of the country, which is the Riviera Maya, Cancun, so, Cancun Playa, Playa Cancun. Yeah, Tulum, so many people from all over the world visit this part of Mexico. And there are other people here who know that, okay, someone from Europe has no idea that a taxi from here to the mall should be 60 pesos. I'm going to charge 300. And those things you can uh, avoid sometimes when you know the language and when you're able to approach a local and ask, hey, how much do you think is uh, a fair amount of money to pay for a taxi from here to the airport? Or where can I find a trusted um, tour guide, you know, some things that happen to anyone visiting any touristy place, those things can be avoided too. 
Yeah, it's that's so important. I never really thought about that because I guess you're kind of like in the in club, you know, and also if you don't know the language, you can't really communicate. You can't even ask for help properly, which is very unfortunate. I mean, not to say you shouldn't travel if you know the language. I mean, that's part. Honestly, that's part of like the the rush too when you're like trying to communicate and you don't know. But knowing it, I think gives you a deeper like Um, like we mentioned, a deeper connection with the people. And also I've noticed when you go to a different country and they don't know how to speak English and you don't know how to speak the language, either you or the other person, you tend to be more shy or you tend to not want to communicate because maybe you're shy, maybe you're afraid that you're going to botch the language. And again, there's that barrier, you know, but I often see it with with the other people. You know, when, when I go to Latin America, a lot of locals are very shy. But then when you start talking their language, they're like, oh, okay, I could talk to you. I don't have to feel self, um, I, I, I'm not feeling really self-conscious about how you know I don't speak English or whatever so I think it's so interesting to see that come off and then it's just like you could talk to them um, normally yeah we have so many so many uh, stories of things that have happened to Jaime specifically here in Mexico things that would never happened if he didn't speak the language like the guy who invited you for mezcal just like a random day, he was walking up to like a park in Ciudad Guzman in the state of Jalisco. And there was this uh, older guy who was also going home and they started talking in Spanish. Yeah. And it was almost as if he was waiting for me there. I went up and visited this beautiful park that overlooks the city. And when I was coming down, I saw that you know, it was getting dark. I should probably head back. And there was this gentleman waiting in the parking lot. It seemed like he was waiting there for me or something and just struck (laughs) up a conversation. And we got to talking and he was heading home and I told him I was heading back as well. And when when we got to the point where we were going to part ways and he was going to go left and I was going to go right... He said, well, uh, would you like to come over? I'd, I'd like to, you know, in, invite you over to my place and, and chat more there or have dinner or whatever. And I thought, wow, everybody my whole life has told me that this is exactly the type of situation where you say no and you run the other <laughs> way. But I felt like the right thing to do in that situation was to accept his invitation and and go along with him. He seemed like a genuine guy and I didn't feel like I was in any particular type of danger. So I went with him and we got to his house and he introduced me to his wife and he gave me some mezcal and we got to talking. And I, I think he had some family who had moved to Colorado and his wife was no, sorry, his daughter was, I think, a dentist, mm. which might have been the whole reason why he invited me over to his place in the first place, at least my things. <laughs> <laughs> Meet my daughter. <laughs> because ev- eventually she came home and he introduced me to her and they invited me to stay for dinner. And it was just a really incredible experience. That I've never experienced anything like that in the United States. That sounds like a sketchy, maybe creepy, potentially dangerous situation, but it taught me a lot about Mexican culture and just how welcoming people are here. And that's one of the the things I'll never forget is how speaking some Spanish, my Spanish wasn't as good back then as it is now, uh, allowed me to have this experience that really altered the way I viewed the world. And I just love to share that story with people because people have this idea that Mexico is so dangerous and that I basically just accepted to be murdered in that situation. But but that wasn't the case at all. It was, uh, it's a great memory that I have of, of that gentleman. And I'll probably tell that story for the rest of my life because a lot of people just, they have this misconception uh, or idea that they they got maybe from the media about what they hear about different countries. And often that's so far from the truth. Sure, Mexico has 
aspects that can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can find yourself in dangerous situations here just as you could in any other country in the world. But there's also a lot of beauty that people don't hear about often. I, I definitely agree with that. I mean, there's a lot of things. I think people often look at the media and think it's, it's the full truth, right? And most of the time, it's not. It's a very small information that, you know, this amount of people know about. And there's so much more into this world. And it's so funny that you had that experience, Jim, because I've had that experience in Egypt, in El Salvador, in Guatemala, in Ecuador, Um like all of these places, like I went to the Middle East and I got invited, my husband and I got invited into a doctor's home and we had dinner with them. Like we, it's just so interesting how, and actually during that time we were told that there were wars and all of these things happening and it was so peaceful and everybody was like amazing. So there's so much that, that you will never know until you actually do it yourself and you you know, it's a risk, right? I mean, everything Absolutely. is a risk. We live in New York City and people are telling people right now not to come here because it's crazy what we know with the pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. So everything is a risk, but you just have to, you know, be smart about it, be cautious when you need to be, but be open to new experiences because if you had said no, you may not have the story that you're telling. <laughs> right, yeah. Yes, right now that's, so that's why we also we want to visit every spanish speaking country in the world and show that even when the media is telling you that things are like the world is going down there is still um good people you know there are still people who would open up their doors to their home and invite you and people who who are kind and people who want to help you and people who also want to learn from others and so that's that's why we want to keep keep going with Spanish and go and see how many more um, stories like this we can <laughs> we can um, finish <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah experiences that we can have and share with other people because it's exactly that people have this mix, misconception about the rest of the world And the more we can break that down, I think the more we can be united as a human species, you know, right? We're able to see that we're all, everybody wants to be happy and to be loved and to feel a sense of community. And learning another language helps you do all of those things. Yeah. I love that. Well, thank you both so much for sharing all of this information and obviously sharing your passion for what you do and helping so many people. If our listeners want to learn more about you, learn how they can learn Spanish uh, from you both, where can they find you? Yeah, you can find us on SpanishAndGo.com. We have all of our links there. Our socials are all at Spanish and Go. And we have our Spanish Immersion Retreats. You can find a link to that on our website as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jim and Mai. This has been amazing. I am so glad that we were able to speak. And hopefully one day we can meet in person <laughs> and yeah, I could take so. your <laughs> Spanish classes, Spanish Immersion, you know, retreats, yeah. whatever you guys have available. <laughs> thank you awesome. again. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks thank for, you having, for us. having us. Take yeah, care. we really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this extended interview with Jim and Mai. Make sure to visit theoffbeatlife.com. Again, that's theoffbeatlife.com to get the full interview where they share how they're able to connect English speakers to Spanish speaking countries. Hey friend, have you been wanting to start a podcast? I know it can be overwhelming in the beginning. Believe me, I have been there. Lucky for you, we have created a new site called howtocreatepodcast.com that shares a ton of freebies that can help you get started. From launching, growing, to monetizing, we share it all in one place. Visit howtocreatepodcast.com for more information. Thanks for joining me on this extended interview. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. We can also chat some more on Facebook at The OB Live. I'll talk to you soon.